Hey everyone, so today I'm going to show you guys how you can download torrents safely. So when it comes to torrenting, there are a couple of things that you want to keep in mind. And that's when you're downloading a torrent, everybody that's exchanging the same file can see everybody else's IP address. And they can also see their ports, their location, and country. And it's just not a safe way to download torrents. And so that's why I always have my VPN on while torrenting. This is a public domain torrent, by the way. And so I'm not downloading anything that's copyrighted. And I hope that you also do the same, so that your online actions align with your local laws. So please make sure that you're keeping everything lawful and that you're not downloading anything that is copyrighted. In any case, when you're torrenting or engaging in any kind of peer-to-peer -peer file sharing, again, your location, IP address, and port will be exposed just like everybody else's that's downloading the same torrent. But of course, when you use a VPN, it encrypts your data and routes your connection through a server in a different location so that it looks like you're somewhere else. And so if somebody's trying to dox you or get your personal information or even your ISP or government trying to pry on your online activities, they'll never be able to see what you're doing as long as your VPN is on. Of course, you're going to need a good VPN for that, which is why I recommend using Express, Nord, and Surfshark. They all have verified no logs policies, which means they've been audited by trusted third party companies and it's been proven that they don't log or store any of their users data. And they all work really well for streaming and torrenting and they have plenty of servers. So you can connect to locations all around the world. They're actually some of the best overall in the entire industry. And I've been using them for a long time, but I'll talk more about them in just a little bit. Basically, all you need to do to make sure that you're secure when you're torrenting is download and install one of these VPNs. And by the way, you can use the links below if you'd like to save a little bit more money on your first subscription. And once you've installed the VPN and opened it, all you have to do is just go to locations, pick one from the list, turn on the VPN, and you should be good to go. But before that, you'll want to understand a couple of features, and those are the kill switch and split tunneling. Now the kill switch is going to disconnect your internet when the VPN disconnects unexpectedly, making sure that you're only going to be connected to the internet while you're protected by the VPN, which prevents any rare IP leaks or any accidental leaks to your ISP or any other outside party that's trying to pry on your online activities. And with split tunneling, you can actually select which applications are routed through the VPN and which are not. So for example, what I usually do is I have my Qubit torrent using the VPN, while the rest of my connection is left outside the VPN tunnel. So if I just go ahead and keep the torrent running and then turn on the VPN, the only application that will be using the VPN is my torrenting client. And that way, if I want to use my banking application at the same time, my bank won't suddenly flag the account because they think someone in some faraway country is using my account. So it's a pretty useful feature. I don't use it a lot, but when I do use it, I'm very grateful that it's available. So that's basically what you really need to know before you use the VPN. Understand what the kill switch is and understand what split tunneling is. Now, as far as protocols, you can honestly always keep it on automatic. I like to use Lightway because it's the fastest on Express. With Nord, however, Nord links will be the best protocol. And if you're using Surfshark, the WireGuard option is what you want to go with. Automatic will always work fine, by the way, but I like to use the fastest protocol, and that's just my personal recommendation. So, as far as how to secure yourself while you're torrenting, this is basically how you can do it. Just download and install one of these VPNs, and you can decide whether or not you want to use the kill switch or split tunneling based on your specific preferences. And obviously, which of these VPNs you choose will also depend on your preferences and needs. So, I'll explain a bit about each one, and that way you can decide which one works best for you. Now, all these VPNs are compatible with all kinds of different devices, by the way, so you can download them on many devices. And you can secure multiple devices at the same time, 8 with ExpressVPN per subscription, 10 with Nord, and a virtually unlimited number of devices with Surfshark. And just to reiterate, while I'm torrenting, I always have my VPN on. That way, I'm always safe when torrenting. And if I go and refresh my IP finder here, it'll say that I'm in the UK since I'm connected to the UK server, even though I'm not actually there. And that way, everyone sharing the torrent file thinks that I'm just some random user in the UK and they have no way of knowing anything about me. Now, as far as which VPN to go for, if you're looking for more information on these VPNs, you can check the description down below for the full reviews. But if you don't have time and just want a quick recommendation, I would say ExpressVPN is the best of the best overall since it's the easiest to use, and it's a super consistent and reliable VPN. So whenever I want to torrent or stream or just use a VPN in general, if I want to get access to a game I don't have access to or a foreign market that's only available in Europe, for example, I usually just use ExpressVPN because it's the easiest and most reliable. And the main reason I like it is because it's so quick. So when I connect to the UK, it's almost instant. Even if I connect to, let's say, a faraway server, let's just go with something as far as Brazil. And when I connect, you'll notice that it literally takes just a couple of seconds to connect. This is one of the best features about ExpressVPN. So my personal recommendation, again, would be ExpressVPN. That's what I like to use on a daily basis. 
Now NordVPN is going to be more of a well-rounded option that offers a whole bunch of features for a very reasonable price, especially for torrenting. I mean, you get something like threat protection, which acts like a little bit of a mini antivirus, whereas with ExpressVPN, you're just going to get the advanced protection, which blocks trackers, malicious sites, and also blocks ads and adult sites if you'd like. But with NordVPN, I think it's a little bit more comprehensive, and you can block trackers, malware, and all kinds of harmful sites and files that you may download accidentally. Nord will basically block these files from ruining your computer. And finally, with Surfshark, this is going to be the best budget VPN that gets the job done at the cheapest possible cost without really sacrificing any of the necessary features. And if you even go with the higher plans, you'll actually get a fully-fledged cybersecurity package, including an antivirus. So if you don't have an antivirus and you need a full package, then you can definitely go with the Surfshark 1 or OnePlus plan for a full cybersecurity protection package. Otherwise, if you don't need any extra protection and you just want the best of the best as far as VPNs, then just go with Express. So that'll be it for this video. If you guys are interested in any of these VPNs, again, you'll find links to pricing discounts in the description down below, as well as full reviews if you'd like to learn a little bit more about them. And when it comes to how much these VPNs cost, out of curiosity, I did ask ExpressVPN, and they mentioned that a lot of people end up spending way more money on the monthly plan than they would have going with the yearly plan, because the typical pattern is that people renew monthly thinking they might not need a VPN long term. So unfortunately, they end up spending more money on the monthly plan with a higher monthly rate than they would have going with the yearly plan, which significantly lowers the rate. Especially with this discount, that gives you three extra months. And there are other discounts, by the way, with Express, Nord, and Surfshark, all of which, again, will be in the description down below. But ultimately, if you know you're not going to need Express or any of these VPNs longer than a month, definitely get the monthly plan. But if there's a chance you might end up using it longer than a month, you might want to go with the longer term plan. Then if you change your mind or realize you won't need it that long, you can always get a refund or go back to just the month at a time plan. And that'll be all for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to check out the links in the description to grab yourself the best discount possible. Like and subscribe to see more of these videos and let me know in the comments if there's anything cybersecurity you'd like me to cover. Again, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.